Kia ora koutou and thanks for the invitation to speak at your Leadership Summit today. We've all become a little more accustomed to meeting this way, virtually, over the past year. For those of you in open and distance education, learning and engaging in this way is the norm and it plays a crucial role in the global education sector. In fact, it means that people all over the world can access education when they might not otherwise be able to upskill. Open and distance learning helps people to gain skills and grow and adapt throughout their lifetimes. COVID-19 has had a major impact on the world and the education sector hasn't been immune from that. But it's also created a shift in people's thinking about what's possible in terms of delivering education, even in the context where traditional modes of learning uh, have been very well set. We pivoted from normal ways of teaching and learning into a way that's flexible, adaptable, more open and to online and distance education. And a great deal of this has been driven by education providers and it's setting the system up for the future. Here in New Zealand, we're currently undergoing major reforms of our vocational education sector to create a stronger, unified, sustainable vocational education system that's more adaptable and fits into today's world to deliver the skills that learners, employers and communities need to thrive. The reforms will enable more people to learn while they earn at the same time, and the system will bring industry voice and industry needs much more to the centre. Our new system will allow learners to move more easily between regions and between work-based and provider-based learning so that they can continue their training even if their employment situation changes. These were areas that we knew we needed to make improvements in. So to make this happen, we're implementing six industry-led workforce development councils that will give industry leadership much more voice and influence within vocational education. We've established regional skills leadership groups that will give regions a much uh, more significant way of inputting their voice into the skills, migration and welfare systems. We've established Tepukinga, a National Institute of Skills and Technology, a new type of education provider with a strong focus on delivering skills to meet employer, industry and learner needs, and I'll touch more on that shortly. We're ensuring that the review of vocational education, or ROVE, reflects the government's commitment to the Māori-Crown relationship with the establishment of Te Taumata Aranui, which puts Māori right at the decision-making table. We're working to shift the role of supporting workplace learning from standalone industry training organisations to providers to provide a more seamless and integrated experience. Te Pukinga and other providers will support work-based learning and deliver education and training to achieve a seamless and flexible learning experience. This will also allow us to unify the funding system uh, to apply to all provider-based and industry education at certificate and qualification levels 3 to 7, so it doesn't include degrees, and to all industry training. We're establishing centres of vocational excellence that will continue to develop high quality curriculum and programme design across the whole system so that our vocational education system continues to meet current industry needs whilst working alongside industry experts and other providers to look to the future. These changes will help us to create a vocational education system that better meets the needs of learners, including learners such as Māori, Pacific people and disabled learners who haven't been well served by the system in the past. It'll make sure that the system is relevant to the changing needs of employers, one that's collaborative, innovative and sustainable for all of our regions across the country. And of course, critically, it will help us to maintain our Māori Crown partnerships. As I mentioned earlier, as part of the reforms, we've established Tepukinga, the New Zealand Institute of Skills and Technology. Tepukinga is a cornerstone of the reform. It brings together 16 institutes of technology and polytechs, and they'll develop the capabilities to support work-based, campus-based and online learning as one unified system. Established in April 2020, Tepukinga is a new type of provider, so it's going to have national and regional reach so that it can become a long-term training partner for industries and learners. It'll better enable learners to transition between workplace and provider-based learning. It'll ensure that learning is flexible and relevant and that can be adapted to work around big challenges like COVID-19 uh, with online distance learning and so on.
The Charter of Tupukinga acts as a regional guarantee. Regions were losing programs due to them being closed down. A national provider can deploy its whole network, including its online and distance platforms, to provide quality access to learners no matter where they live. Tupukinga is working on its future operating model, how it's going to deliver on its charter and its functions to achieve what's needed of it. I know it's looking at how to place learners at the centre of this model. It's also looking to deliver skills in ways that work for firms, which means that they can be more flexible in their delivery, that there are easier ways to access upskilling, and of course that lifelong learning is available to everybody. Open and online approaches will inevitably be part of this. What we're trying to achieve is not an easy task, but we've been making good progress and we're continuing to build on that. All of the changes that we're making now will ensure that the vocational education system in New Zealand is equitable and that it enables all learners to succeed. The creation of Tapukinga will mean that all of the work across the sector is more coordinated and aligns to the overarching strategic goals we've got. An important stakeholder in this work is of course those who are working in the sector and we're going to continue to work closely with all of them to make sure that we're getting things right. I'm looking forward to sharing our progress with you all over the coming months and years as we pave the way for a new future for vocational education in New Zealand. So once again, thank you for having this opportunity to address you and I wish you all the very best. Tēnā katoa.